This video will be an overview of single slot pay phones. I will create an additional video that will discuss the three slot pay phones. The intended audience of this video are those who have acquired a phone to put in their uh, pool room, man cave, etc. The serious payphone collectors um, have multiple payphones, as in lots of phones, and uh, have located the resources to help them uh, go to the next level. My intent is just to provide a little bit of general information that is difficult to find on the internet or YouTube uh, as one source. There's a lot of information out there, however you have to hunt and pick for it. I have lots of videos regarding specific pay phones that's in my collection that shows the phones in detail and how they work. I will show the upper and lower locks of the payphone. And then I will show the insides of a couple of phones. There is a multitude of payphones that was manufactured. Automatic electric, then you had Western electric, and Northern electric, which is the Bell of Canada. The most common two phones in the United States are Western Electric and Automatic Electric. In the late 1980s, there was pay phones that were designed to be owned by individuals who created their own pay phone routes. And I was in that business for about 10 years. These particular phones we're looking at were telephone company owned pay phones, which means uh, for the most part, they did not have any intelligence in them. They were just kind of like a home phone and a steel box with a couple of additional mechanisms to deal with the coin uh, collect return and uh, sorting the coins out and so forth. One of the largest issues people have when acquiring pay phones is they'll get a pay phone and they will not get the key or keys for the pay phone. It's very important to understand that the lower part of the pay phone where the money goes into the coin box, every single pay phone had its own individual unique lock. You will not find a common key to open the bottom of any of these phones, regardless of who manufactured it. I had a route of 140 phones and I had a key ring with 140 keys just to get to the money box. The upper housing locks were keyed alike per company that owned the phones or the state and area code that the phones was installed. Within the Bell system, such as Oregon and Washington, had two keys, one for the Washington state, one for Oregon state. I believe California had a Northern California key and a Southern California key. These keys are not easily available. There is one person who has the master list of all the keys and can make a key if you know the area code and the exchange that the phone was actually installed in. There is a slight possibility that a key would be available for that. So if you have a phone and you do not have the keys, you have a problem. The locks can be removed, such as drilled out. There are three different types of locks. Well, there's more than that, but for this discussion, three different types of locks. You have the lever key lock that was used in the Western electric phones. 
than the medico type high security lock that was used in the GTE automatic electric phones. And then you had a third lock that was used in, by a lot of the cocots called Abloy. If you have a phone with an Abloy lock in it, you have no problem getting into the phone because those were the cheapest Radio Shack type locks that's ever been manufactured. The amount of effort to get into a phone with an Abloy lock is seconds versus minutes or hours. If you have a Western Electric phone with a Western Electric lock, you've got yourself a real serious project. I myself have had to drill locks to get into pay phones and it is not enjoyable. You can break a lot of bits. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you can cause a lot of damage. So if you have not bought the phone yet, even though it may be a good deal at the secondhand store or eBay, if there's no keys, I recommend running from it. Now, there are lots of pay phones out there that you can get the keys from if the people who originally owned it either unlocked them and provided the key or removed the locks, then you're good to go. But if you don't have the keys, you are really got a problem on your hand. And this is one of the absolute most asked questions that I see in the phone forums and some of the collector clubs is gaining access to the payphone. The other most common question people have is how to make the telephones function. If it was a telephone company owned telephone, those telephones were connected to special telephone lines that controlled the payphone. You can still get those phone lines for a very large rate per month. And if you can find anybody left in any of the landline companies that can even order the line for you, they still do kind of exist. And then you had the COCOT, the private owned customer owned telephones that had computer boards inside of them and they used just a standard basic residential or business telephone line and the computer did all of the work for uh, uh, rating the call, collecting and returning and so forth. The issue with the COCOT phones is there were several different manufacturers. One of the largest ones was Protel and they had the best product, in my opinion, out there. Then there was Alcatel, Intellicall, and then some other no names, Ernest Telecom, which was an Amway distributed payphone. All of them requires programming. There is, I believe, some of the early Protel phones that'll work in default mode, which just charges 25 cents for everything. And for home use, that would be very adequate. The other thing is these phones need to be connected to a real telephone line, not a simulated line, because the COCOT phones, some of them, charges the battery off the phone line while the phone is in use. And if you have a X-Link for your cell phone or a ATA from Vonage and so forth, the odds are the battery will never fully charge. And depending on how much usage the phone gets, it will eventually run down. And even on real phone lines, if the phones were heavily used in some areas and lightly used in others, there was still a battery issue that I encountered out of the 140 phones I owned. The batteries are inexpensive and they're still readily available. I will open up a couple of these phones that we're looking at. Uh, these are all Western electric phones. There's the touchtone version and the rotary dial version. The, <clears throat> I will show the insides of them and show you that one of them is what's called a 1C. And then later on in this video, I will open up the inside of a phone that's got a 1D chassis board. The chassis boards will operate the rotary or tone upper housing, depending on what the phone was equipped with. 
Then with the automatic electric phones, they had a PC type board in their uh, 120B and even to some degree in the 120As, and I will show one of those two phones and the locking mechanism. So I'm not going to go into extreme detail on how the phones work. There's videos discussing each individual phone, and this is just a very quick overview. I will show triple slot phones on the next video, and those are more complicated to the, because of the fact that they've been stripped out for the most part and modified um, for home use many, many years ago. And to try to make them functioning as a payphone is very expensive and almost impossible, except for people who really have the parts and the knowledge on how to work on payphones. I have a very small collection of payphones. There's only about 40 in my collection. There are people out there that have hundreds of phones of all vintages and uh, other manufacturers that were kind of a one-off, limited, uh, short-lived manufacturer of phones. So this phone right here is what is called a 1D as in dog 2. This was the last major production of the Western Electric series single slot phones. After divestiture, AT&T started using this equipment and branding it with the AT&T logo as private owned pay phones, which had computers inside of them. So occasionally you will find one of those out in the wild. They're not that common, but they do exist. So this chassis board, which is what controls the payphone, or partially controls it, would have a, a big computer in it that required a 24 volt transformer, I believe, to make it work, and then a standard telephone line. This again was a telephone company owned phone, so it was connected to a spatial line in order to make it work. So between the telephone board here, the totalizer that's on the coin mechanism, <clears throat> relay in the central office trunk would detect coins and then the central office would either accept or collect the coin depending on if the call was answered or unanswered. As this phone sits, it can be made to work as a single line, non-coin telephone. The behind the relay, uh, which is a magnet that responds to positive or negative power, where either collect or return the coin, and that relay can be manually operated and then a giant paper clip to hold it down, and that should put the coins in the return bucket normally it could also route it to the coin box so if you wanted to make it a piggy bank you'd want it to go to the coin box i described the payphone relays on another video and i do not want to get into those details on this video this is just a basic generic information video only i will remove the cover of the rotary dial phone and it has a different set of insides in it and the big issue with the 1D here is it has a solid state totalizer is where the 1C will have a great big huge block totalizer. They'll have a terminal strip for wiring options and it will look different. Both the 1C and 1D are common on eBay and are easily available. I have the cover removed <clears throat> off of a 1D. C payphone. The inside of this phone has the mechanical totalizer, the chassis board that can be optioned for different types of phone lines, which in today's world would not have to be changed. They would have been set up for loop start lines, and it has the coin relay in it. Again, this phone requires a spatial line in order to make it function. If it is set up to just be a single line phone only, 
um, as in just like a standard extension phone. It will never accept a collect return the coins. In order to make this thing function as a payphone, there is a couple of devices on the market that uh, can control the phone. They need a slight modification to the phone to make that work. They're not very common due to the limited production of them. <clears throat> and they require a little bit more skill than just hooking up to wires. Most of the payphones that collectors have, they're interested in the payphones for the technical point of view, more than just to have a, one hanging on the wall <clears throat> to look nice. So again, there's two different types of phones, Western Electric and Automatic Electric shells. And then there was aftermarket components made to convert this from a telephone company telephone to a smart private owned co-cop phone. I do not have any of those operational uh, that I could demonstrate them because they need to be programmed and I don't have my computer set up to uh, operate that phone. Again, I'm just trying to provide a little bit of general overview. Here's the lock that's installed in the upper housing of a Western Electric payphone. You need to have the key for that specific lock. And once the lock is unlocked, then there's a second mechanism that is used to unlatch the upper housing. And that requires the T key. The T key operates these dogs which is what actually holds the upper housing on the phone. Once the lock is, the key is put in, the phone is assembled and the key is put in, down here you can see where I'm operating that. This prevents these dogs from moving. So just having the key, T key is, does not do anything. The T keys are very readily available. And it goes back to, again, getting this lock out. I have a loose lock that I will show the lock out of the phone. These are damn near impossible to get into. This is the lower lock for a Western Electric Bell System payphone. This particular lock doesn't work super well. That's why I put a black mark on it. But it is still a functional lock. Probably just needs to have... Uh, some graphite or something put into it or on the key so this is what the lock looks like so this part right here that i've got my thumb on is what would be sticking out the side of the phone on the bottom and then this is the rear of the lock the upper housing lock is identical to this with one exception of course key different instead of having the this super extremely hardened steel it has a different type of a face on it that's more flat otherwise the locks are actually interchangeable between the upper and lower housing and a phone close up of the upper housing close up of the lower housing for reference only this is a panel phone there's a touch tone and a rotary version these are not very common. The odds are you will not find these at a secondhand store or a thrift store. They're even rare on eBay. Another issue is with the Western Electric telephones, the handset cord comes out of the face of the telephone and the coin return bucket is on the left side of the telephone. This is an automatic electric payphone. The handset cord comes out of the left side of the telephone and the coin return bucket will be on the right side of the phone. I have the upper housing removed to show the inside of the phone. As I stated previously, the coin return bucket is on the right side of the phone. I also have the coin box removed and the vault door removed. In this phone, this uses medical locks, and I will show that in a moment. That's the medical lock in the lower housing of a GTE automatic electric phone.
also the same that was used in the cocot phones. This is the outside of the lower housing lock. This is the upper lock on a GTE phone, and that is also a medical lock. This is a lot easier to show how it works. So I have a key in it, and I can turn the key, as long as it's the correct key for the lock. Doing this clears the dogs, so you can then, using the T key, the same as the Western Electric, you can open and close uh, the lock. So right there, it would be on the phone. Right there, it's off the phone. Once the housing's on the phone and the key is returned, you've secured the upper housing of the phone. It's the same exact concept on the Bell System phones. It's just a different lock and slight change in the dog assembly. There are no interchangeable parts between Western Electric and Automatic Electric with the exception of the handset is the only thing that will be interchangeable between the two telephones. This is the inside of a 120A payphone made by Automatic Electric. This particular phone was set up for post-pay service, so there is no coin relay. The coin relay looks the same in this phone as it does in the Western phone. However, it is a different relay. They're not interchangeable with one another and I will show a 120B that has the relay in it. These are not that common, but they do still exist because this is an early payphone. And again, this phone requires a special phone line to make it operate correctly. I'll show the difference between a Western Electric lever lock key, which is generally thinner and cut much differently. The medical key is a thicker key, and where the cuts are, some of them are at different angles, so that gives them a lot of combinations. The medical lock is a very high security lock. The Western Electric, Northern Electric is an insane security lock. This is an automatic electric single slot 120B. This particular one was an early one because it has the half-ass buttons on it instead of the full-size square buttons like your normal touchstone phones have, but it still uh, is a complete functional payphone. The inside of the 120B, this is their dumb circuit board. It has dip switches or options to set the rates for 25 cents, 50 cents, and so forth for local calls only. The long distance was done by a different system. Again, this is just a dumb phone and it cannot be made functional without a special line or a special controller. If this phone circuit board was replaced by a computer board, such as a Protel, Alcatel, and so forth, the computer boards, of course, to someone who's not familiar with electronics, would have a lot of similarities, but instead of having uh, uh, mercury relays and, and jumper straps, it would have programmable integrated circuits and so forth on it. They don't have ringers generally on the COCOT phones. They might have a little electronic buzzer or a piezo ringer, they call it. The uh, coin relays are the same uh, for the most part, and the coin mechanism is the same between a regulated phone and a non-regulated phone. I'm just showing this as a reference only, but for some of the rotary dial pay phones in their original day, this was some of the equipment that was re required to make it work. This is only part of additional components. The pay phone, the single slot phone that's on the left, is kind of a unique phone as the touch tone pad is dark gray and it's plastic, which is a very early touch tone pad. The beige phone next to it is an automatic electric phone and I, a uh, three slot phone, and I will create a video describing three slots. The inside of an automatic electric three slot phone quick view of some of the switching equipment that the rotary dial telephones most likely would have been connected to in their day. 
I'm only showing this as a quick reference. I have many videos on switching and telephones on my playlist. I have a series of videos for pay phones, uh, specific pay phones, models, and how they work. Again, the overall intent of this video is just a very quick uh, covering what a person uh, can find on pay phones and the difficulties in trying to get into them and make them work. This is one of the payphone controllers that can be used to make a vintage payphone operate, assuming that the payphone is functioning as a payphone was supposed to function with a slight modification. These are hand-built. There's not very many of them out there. They come up from time to time on eBay. This is a nice little package, and it works great. Thanks for watching. I do have a Patreon account. I also have a playlist that shows various telephone videos. Have a great day.